This is Switzerland, a country split into 26 different cantons and four different languages. It may in a sense seem divided, but there is one thing though that brings most of the population together, literally. It's where they live. If you draw a diagonal line from the western resort town of Montreal on Lake Geneva to the northeastern rural town of Appenzell, you'll find that the vast majority of the Swiss population, a staggering 80%, live above this line, even though the bottom half has much more area. So for every five people in Switzerland, you will find four of them north of this line. Think of the first Swiss city that comes to mind. Maybe you thought of Zurich, Geneva, or Bern. Well, all of them are above this line. In fact, the only major city south of it is Lugano, a popular resort destination on Lake Lugano not far from the Italian border. But why is this the case? Why is Switzerland's population so divided? Well, there actually isn't only one reason, even though it's easy to just say the Swiss Alps. The explanation is geographical, cultural, political, and historical, and it tells the story of Switzerland as a nation. So let's look into the geography a little more first. Obviously, this line we made closely mirrors the Alpine Divide, which basically divides Switzerland and Europe itself into two parts based on the huge mountain range and the direction that the major rivers flow. The rivers that flow north of the Alpine Divide, such as the Rhine and the Aar, drain into the North Sea, while the rivers that flow south of the Divide, such as the Rhone and the Ticino, drain into the Mediterranean Sea. But like I said, it's a lot more than that. Switzerland is divided into three main regions, the Central Plateau, the Jura, and the Alps. Both the Central Plateau and the Jura are above the line, and the vast majority of the country lives in the Central Plateau, which has a population density of about 450 people per square kilometer. The biggest region of it is the Mitterland, which acts as the agricultural and industrial hub of Switzerland. But what does this plateau have that the Alps don't? Well, for starters, a radically different climate. On the central plain, the climate is much more temperate and better for growing crops. The soil, too, is generally richer and temperatures are more predictable. In fact, in 2020, the plateau region accounted for approximately 40% of the total agricultural land in Switzerland, making it the most important area in the country for this. And sure, while these days it might be very easy to put your farm produce on a plane or a train and transport it to a population center elsewhere, that hasn't always been the case. Historically, it was really important to live close to your crops, and the importance of that still remains relevant today. It's the same with the historic importance of living near large bodies of water. I mean, most of the most populated cities on Earth live near them. And even though Switzerland is landlocked, it doesn't mean they have no water, obviously. If you look at where the largest lakes and rivers of Switzerland are located, you'll find again they're mostly north of the line, including Lake Geneva, Lake Nierchetal, and Lake Bien, the three largest in the country. The geographical location of these cities also means that it's shielded from many of the natural disasters, such as avalanches and landslides that are common in the Alps. And I mean, who even wants to build in the mountains when you don't have to? Besides the views, of course. It's colder, the weather is crazier, it's harder to grow food, and you have to drill into the rock to build your towns and villages. Not to mention how much harder it is to build pathways for goods and services to get to you. It's isolating. And this brings me onto my next point. Infrastructure. Given that the area north of this line we drew is less mountainous, it means there's more flatlands not only for farming, but also for building transportation networks. Historically, and even today, it's way easier to build in these conditions. And the fact that this region's location is basically the heart of Europe, at least much more so than the south of it is, means there was a greater importance to develop it. You see, being in the center made it a hub for trading and cultural exchange, so it had to be built up for the sake of all countries. That's why, if you look at this photo of the Swiss rail network, the north is way more developed. Despite all this though, this divide isn't just about geography and geology. I mean, the area south of the line is massive, and as we can see from Lugano, it's perfectly possible to build fairly large and successful cities there. So what else explains the significance of this line? Well, just like everything else, politics is somehow involved. Like I said before, Switzerland is divided into 26 cantons, which are sort of like the Swiss version of the US states. None of these cantons can rival a state like Texas or California, obviously, but they do, however, have a high degree of independence from the Swiss government. They have their own legislatures, constitutions, judicial systems, and all that. And together, they make up the Swiss Confederation. These cantons are actually older than modern Switzerland itself as well, with the first ones confederating in the 13th century, way before Switzerland became the country we now know in 1848. These earlier cantons existed in a very different time from today, and relied on trade and commerce with France and Germany in particular. Population distribution was determined in part by who happened to be the confederation's closest trading partners the best part of a millennium ago. 
Just like how it makes more sense to build your settlements close to where the best crop growth occurs, in an age long before the car or the train, it was important to build close to your trading partners to cut down on journey times. The cantons in the center of Switzerland speak German, while French is the majority language of the western side of the country. And of course, some of South Switzerland also speak Italian, and even fewer speak Romansh. So how does all this shape current day Switzerland? Well, many of Switzerland's northern and most populated cantons, such as Zurich and Basel, were situated along important trade routes that connected them to the German cities of Frankfurt, Ulm and Augsburg. These trade routes facilitated the exchange of goods, ideas and culture between the Swiss and Germans, leading to a close economic and cultural relationship. While on the other hand, although the western cantons of Switzerland also had trade links with France, they were historically more isolated due to their geography. The rugged terrain of the Jura Mountains made travel and trade between Switzerland's western regions and France more difficult, not giving them the ability to benefit as much economically out of this partnership as the German-speaking parts did with Germany. Swiss German is also more closely related to the German language than Swiss French is to the French language, which may have facilitated easier communication and cultural exchange between the two regions. The Alps have also served as a natural protection from invasions from the east, which historically were always a threat. The Huns, Magyars, Turks and many more armies never conquered the land of present-day Switzerland because the Alps provided a significant physical barrier that made it almost impossible for large armies to pass through, which helped protect Switzerland from invasion by deterring potential aggressors. This of course contributed to the relative stability and security of the northern cities. These things are what helped establish them as the strongest cities of all of Switzerland. Switzerland's biggest financial hub is Zurich, its seat of government is Bern, and its center of diplomacy is Geneva, all in the north and all located above, again, this line. The last reason for this population distribution is why it may never end up changing, and that is immigration. Switzerland has a large number of immigrants, with around 30% of the population coming from another country. And, as you'd expect, most immigrants have chosen to settle in places with the most opportunities. These are the big urban centers, and as we already know, they're mostly northern, increasing the proportion of the population up there even further. Even when the Swiss government pursued a policy of decentralization and encouraged people to move out of major towns and cities in the aftermath of the Second World War, people still just moved to rural areas north of the line. So, will it ever change? I don't know. Economically, it makes much more sense to expand what you already have than to build somewhere else, even if technology now allows it. So, it doesn't really seem like it for the time being. But at the same time, with the ongoing new railway link through the Alps construction project, which includes the recently completed Gotthard base tunnel, Lochberg base tunnel, and Cineri base tunnel, the Swiss Alps are becoming less of an obstacle for southern Switzerland in terms of efficient rail transport which in turn may end up bringing more people to live in this region. So really, who knows? Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. I'll see you in the next video.